Hey guys, hope you're all doing good. In this video, we are going to be looking at some common rear suspension architectures. So primarily, you know, you can see that the rear suspension architectures can be quite different. So for example, in Audi A2, you have the torsion beam. Uh, whereas if you take a look at Dodge Ram, which is a utility vehicle, you have a rigid axle. Uh, if you look at Audi A3, you have a trailing arm multi-link suspension. Whereas if you take Q7, you have a five link multi-link suspension systems. On what factors do these suspension architectures depend on? Well, the first factor that determines the type of suspension system is obviously the cost, right? Now, if you take Q7, it's a far more premium vehicle, which means you pay more for it. In that case, you can actually spend more for the suspension system, which means you can have more linkages, which gives you more freedom in controlling how the suspension and how the nuttle motion is. Whereas if you take a look at Audi A2, it's still a premium car, but it's relatively low priced. So in this case, we go with a very simple suspension system such as the torsion beam to take care of the ride handling, right? So that is one issue. The second issue can be packaging. And finally, it depends on the segment of the car. If it's a sports car, then the suspension system design is completely different. The approach you take is different. Whereas if it's a passenger car, the approach that you take towards handling and safety is quite different. All right, with that, I would like to conclude this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.